Hello everybody, in this video we're going to continue with our cheat code system. So in the previous video we implemented a code, a cheat code system like Grand Theft Auto 5, Grand Theft Auto 4 where you would pull out your cell phone and you would be able to ch type in your cheat code and you know something would spawn. In this one we're going to do where you could use your keyboard and you would be able to use your gamepad as well. So let's just get started. So I did create an empty game object. I'm going to zero this out. I'm just going to call this cheat code handler. And then I'm gonna add my script called cheat code. And I'm gonna open it up in Visual Studio. Now when this is all opened up, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna erase the start because we will not need it. And I'm gonna erase the top part over here. So we're just gonna be using Unity Engine. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add an if statement. Well actually let's add the variable. So we're gonna check, or we're gonna add a private variable and we're gonna check time before it's gonna be a float and it's gonna be called time before cheat ends so this is like it says it's going to be the time before the cheat code ends so if you're pressing some key presses and this runs out then you have to start all over and we're going to do if cheat code ends or time before cheat code ends is less than or equal to zero then what we're going to do is we're going to set some variables to false the variables we're going to set is going to be booleans and the booleans we're going to set is going to be cheat started so this is when the cheat has started we're going to check if the s button has been pressed because we're going to type in spawn to be able to spawn an object now if you were doing let's say an xbox game or playstation game or whatever you would check if you know a certain button was pressed so like the x button on the PlayStation or on the Xbox or whatever. So now if we continue, we're gonna put P press, A press, and W press. And you'll see why we need these later on. And we're also gonna add one more called cheat activated. And you'll also see why we need this later on. So after that, that'll be all the booleans we need. We're just gonna set everything to false. So cheat started equals false. So if it's less than or equal to zero, then the cheat started has is gonna be equal to false. So it's cheat activated, or actually not cheat activated, uh, S pressed, P pressed, A pressed, and W pressed. They're all gonna be set to false. Now we're gonna check if cheat started equals true. So if cheat started equals true, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get time before cheat ends, and we're gonna minus equals time dot delta time. So it's gonna subtract it, by delta time and whatever the result is, it's just gonna set it back to that same variable, to this variable. Now after that, we're gonna check if the input, so we're gonna check if the player has pressed the key code or the key, the S key on the keyboard. So if they have, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put time before cheat ends is gonna be equal to a new variable, which we're actually gonna make it public we're gonna make this one public. Well, not public, we're gonna serialize field it and it's gonna be set to private and it's gonna be called the float or it's gonna be a float and we're gonna call it max time for cheat. So this is gonna be the max time that we have pretty much complete the cheat. So in between each press, this is gonna be the max time for that. So we're just gonna set this back to max time for cheat and then we're gonna put cheat started equals true and then we're gonna put S pressed equals true as well. You could put a debug log to see if the S button was pressed, but I'm just gonna leave it like that. And then we're just gonna keep on going. We're gonna do the P, the A, the W, and the N. So I'm just gonna copy this. So this is for the P, the A, the W, and the N. So if I go up here to the second if statement, I'm gonna put key code dot P and then I'm gonna check. So I'm gonna put and if the S press is equal to true. So if we actually press the S key. So if that is equal to true, then P press is gonna be equal to true. And we're just gonna continue like that. So this was P, I'm gonna put this as A and P press is gonna be equal to true. If it is, we're gonna keep going. And actually we're not gonna need chi started anymore to be equal to true. We just need to set that once. So we could erase all these, except for in the, in the first if statement. So let's just erase all these. And now we're gonna put W. For the third if statement, we're gonna put and P pressed, oh no, A pressed equals true. And right here, I forgot to put A pressed equals true. 
And then last one is gonna be N, and we're just gonna check if the W press true. And we'll just set this over here. And for the W, or for the N, we don't need to check if any of the keys were pressed, because that's pretty much the end of the cheat. And with the end of the cheat, what we're gonna do is, we don't even have to set this anymore. All we gotta do is call cheat activated equals true. So we just gotta set that to true. And down here, we'll just add our last if statement saying if cheat activated equals true, I'm gonna instantiate and I'm gonna add our last variable. You could just instantiate a game object. So you can have just game object and then instantiate any prefab or anything like that that you want. What I'm gonna do is in our last video, we made cheat code data and I'm gonna get that cheat code data which already has game objects in that data to spawn for me. So I'm just gonna go cheat code data and I'm put cheat code data right here. If I go to instantiate, I'm gonna put cheat code data dot object to spawn and it's gonna be spawned at the camera dot main dot transform dot position. It's gonna be, and we're gonna add a new vector. So it's not exactly on the camera position. And we're gonna put a zero on the X, zero on the Y. And then for the Z axis or the Z axis, we're gonna put negative five. And we also got to add the rotation. So we're gonna put quaternion dot identity. So it keeps the rotation of the object. And then lastly, we're just gonna set all these back to false. So we'll just grab everything set it back to false and also set cheat activated back to false. So that's pretty much it. Let's test this out real quick. Make sure everything worked. So go to cheat code handler. Uh, we're gonna do max time for cheat. We're gonna put 20 seconds just so you guys could see how this works. And cheat code data, like I said, if you have a game object, just dra drag your game object or your prefab into there. But I actually have our cheat code data in my scripts folder. And over here, cheat codes and spawn vehicle. Now, if I drag in the spawn object, I have this ice cream truck in the spawn object. In this spawn of another object, I have a, a muscle car. So we'll check both of them out. Now I'll just hit play. And now, actually I'll pause it and I'll go over here through to these three dots. Go to debug mode so we can see all our private variables right here. Now when I hit S, you can see the timer starts going down. Our cheat started is set to true and S pressed is set to true. So now if I hit P, now P is set to true and the timer went back to 20. Now if I put A, same thing, W, same thing. Now when I hit N, it should spawn in our object and cheat activated should be set to true and then false real quickly. So let me hit that and there you go. We spawned our, in our object. Now with these scriptable objects, like I said, I showed you guys in the previous video. So check that out. If you haven't, I could drag in another one, another scriptable object that I made. And now when I actually hit my cheat code, it brings in that object. Now, as you can see, it kind of flipped that object, but as you can see, it works. Now, let's say I change this to five seconds, our max time for cheat, and I hit S and let it run out. What's gonna happen is it's gonna reset. Now, if I hit P, A, W, N, it won't work unless I hit the right combination again. So every time I hit a button, it goes back to five seconds. If let's say I don't hit the end on time, it will just reset. And now when I hit N, it does not work. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful and useful. If you guys need any help or anything about this video, uh, just let me know any questions. Let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, do not forget to hit that subscribe button. And once again, thank you guys.